Hi, my name is Miguel Ayasmin, school social worker with the Halton Catholic District School Board, making another video with the hope that we can be as supportive as possible during this time where we're not able to be together at school. In this one, I want to talk about something that I refer to as brain basics, something I teach the youth that I work with because I find that when they understand their brains better and the way it functions, they can better appreciate why they're experiencing what they're experiencing and possibly even know what to do about it. Um, by that, I mean things like depression, anxiety, fear, frustration, worry, panic, uh, but also like joy and excitement and their happy moods and stuff as well, too. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to be using a concept called the hand model of the brain that was developed by Dr. Daniel Siegel. And so I'll quite literally be using my hand to explain it. I ask you to join me in doing this as well, too, so that it can help grow your understanding as well. We have a three-part brain, uh, three major components that work together in order to give this the fullness of the whole brain. If we think of our arm as the spinal cord that comes up to the base of our brain, or even here as the base of our hand, um, and this part here, the thicker part of our hand, is what we refer to as the low brain, the very primitive kind of instinctual part of the brain. It's the part that helps us with our bodily functions, things that we do every day without even thinking about it that keeps us alive and running things like our heart rate blood circulation our breathing um, body temperature control all those things are in here if i tuck my thumb in this part here is the limbic system this part is primarily responsible for our emotions our perception the way we see the world and our memories when i tuck my fingers over top this is the outer part of the brain the higher cerebral cortex. This is the part that makes us uniquely human because the part that gives us all our complex thinking, our strategizing, our problem solving, um, ways that we create and innovate. All three parts working together to give us the wholeness of the human brain. What we know is, is that when we are feeling more emotionally kind of escalated, the majority of the resources go into this area of the brain. The reason why is because it activates the fight or flight response. So if I'm feeling panicked, What's happening is my heart rate increases. I'm feeling hot because of the increased blood circulation. Maybe I'm sweating. Um, my fists are clenching or I feel tension in my body because it's activating in order to respond physically. Um, and this part here is what feels the fullness of the emotion, the, the extreme panic or the worry or the anxiety, maybe even anger as a result of that. Um, so when we're in this state, it, Daniel Siegel talks about it as though it's almost as though we flip our lids. He says that because, because since all the resources are allocated here, the higher part of the brain has less resources. So therefore, we can't think clearly, problem solve more effectively in that moment. So what's important then is that we somehow figure out how to calm this area of the brain down so we can become more integrated and more rational. What can happen is if we're in this state, we tend to behave more impulsively and reactively and maybe even do things that we'll regret later on. So how do we do this? Well, many of the videos that we're making are actually about this in particular, about how to create, um, do things in our day to day that can actually help us to remain calm and to be more regulated in this area. What I want to talk about in particular is about kind of self-talk and that self-validation piece. Hardy made a great video about that. And I'll ask you to actually kind of check that one out in order to understand this better. But many times what I'm hearing from young people is that they can feel like their brains are working against them. Like they can't control their anxiety. They don't know why they're becoming anxious or they, the, why the panic comes up. It's almost as though they, they feel like they're being attacked by their own brain. I want to assure you that your brain is never working against you. It's always working for you. It's there to protect you and to keep you safe. What can be happening is you may be having um, a bigger perception of the threat that you are experiencing, or maybe even perceiving a threat that's not even there. That being the case then, what's happening is this area of the brain is becoming more activated because it's trying to do whatever it can to keep you safe and to protect you. So in these moments, what's important is to actually use self-validation and self-talk to reassure this part of the brain because what this part of the brain wants to know is it wants to know that it feels understood in order for it to feel like it can be safe that it is safe um, so being reassured and validated by other people actually accomplishes this quite well but we can also do this for ourselves 
um, I encourage our young people to sit there and to say to themselves, um, you know what, thank you so much for trying to protect me. I know you're trying to keep me safe, but I know for a fact that there are things here that are not in fact threats, or there are things here that I know that I have power and control over that I can do in order to kind of keep myself safe and to reassure myself. As a greater, bigger example, right now we're in this pandemic with a very real threat uh, of something that we know very little about. Right now, globally, everyone is actually experiencing an increased level of activity in this area of the brain, which means that we're hearing people feeling like they're more stressed, anxious, worried, afraid, maybe even tired, frustrated, confused. That is normal. And if you're feeling that way, it makes sense. So what's important then is to reassure this part of the brain in the things that you are able to control at this time which is things that like the government or the CDC are recommending, like social distancing, physical distancing, um, hand washing, you know, for 20 seconds appropriately, using hand sanitizers, adhering to the stay at home policies. All of those things can be done in order for this part of the brain to feel reassured that you are doing everything in order to keep yourself safe so that you can become more integrated. I hope this stuff makes sense and I hope that it's helpful to you. I, I, I challenge you to just go ahead and try and understand it as best as possible and to maybe just go over these concepts again so that you can kind of grow your understanding of how your brain works. Um, thank you for listening.